Hi guys, welcome to the second uh, part of probability for the General 2 HSC Year 12 course. So looking at number of arrangements, for the most part this is pretty straightforward, um, but there are some more challenging questions. So in the previous uh, lesson we looked at things such as um, rolling, let's say rolling two dice, okay? And I spoke about finding the total number of outcomes to begin with by simply saying, well, there are six sides on the first dice, there are six sides on the second dice, to define the total amount of outcomes, we simply multiply them together, which gives me 36. That is very similar to finding the number of arrangements. Um, we simply find out how many of each can occur, and we multiply them together. Okay, basically we're looking at um, yeah, A times B times C, etc. for your arrangements. So you might get questions such as, you know, you might get three entrees, um, you might get two main meals, and you might get five desserts. It's a very common question. They might say, how many different combinations can you have? Um, often I use what I call the place method, and I simply say, well, there are three different options for my entrees, two different options for my mains, five different options for my desserts, and then we simply multiply them together. Three times two is six, six times five is 30, therefore I have 30 possibilities. Um, there can be other questions, it might be to do with arranging digits, um, where sometimes it might be useful to write them out. But for the most part, simply find out how many of each can occur and then times them together. So let's look at some questions. Like usual, please Maybe pause it, have a go at the question, and then see what you can come up with. Okay, so how'd you go? A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. So I've got two things that are being occurred at the current time. We've got a coin that has two different options, a heads and tail. We have a die that has six different options. Now the number's one to six. Therefore, there are 12 possible outcomes at the end of it. That's my answer, nice and easy. Question through R2. Well, example three. The first page of mathematics paper has three multiple choice questions. So I've got three multiple choice questions going on. And with each of the four, I have four answers. How many different ways are they answering? Well, there are four options for the first question, four options for the second question. There are four options for the third question which gives me basically four to the power of three, which is 64 possible combinations. Um, it's If you had to write them out, that's gonna be a really long time, but think about it this way. You could have things like A, B, and C, A, B, and D, A, B, and B, A, B, and C, and you, know, you could go the whole way through that. Um, it's gonna take a really long time. Okay, let's look at the next question. Three cards are labeled C, J, and M. They can be arranged in any order. In how many different ways can these cards be arranged? Well, I'm choosing three cards. So again, I like to use the three place method or the place method. There are three cards to choose from to begin with. So I've got three options. But now I've chosen a card, therefore there must only be two options left. And now that I've chosen two cards, there can only be one option left, which means I have six altogether. Now in class, you may have heard the word factorial, which is denoted by, denoted, sorry, by an exclamation mark, which means three factorial. This can often be useful. Now obviously with a number like three times two times one, the three factorial doesn't really give us much of benefit. But let's say, for example, you had um, 52 cards. Let's say you had a deck of cards in a, uh, like a full deck of cards. And you had to do 52 by 51 by 50 by 49 by 48. It's going to take a long time. In that case, you could use the factorial button on your calculator, often denoted by the X with a little factorial. And then that would give you the total number of combinations that would happen for 52 cards. But in this case, we've only got three cards, which is nice and easy. The other option too, because we only have six options, you might actually, and this could help us with the other questions, you might actually write them out. MCJ, MJC, you would then have CMJ, CJM, and if I pull J out the first time, JMC, 
or JCM, and you can see again you've got your six options there. Now this can be quite useful for the second question, not necessarily the first question. The second question says, what is the probability that the second card in an arrangement is a J? Well, now I've got my arrangements written up there. We've got one there, we've got one there, for therefore we have two in six options, which is one in three options. Okay, again, nice and easy there. The next one, number three, it says, what is the probability that the last card is not a C? Well, you could do it one of two ways. You could say, okay, well, that's not a C there. For the, there's a J, there's a J, there's an M, there's an M. Therefore, we have four in six options or two in three options. The other way you might look at it, well, you have two options where you do have a C. So one take away two out of six, that still would give you the four out of six, which is the two thirds. So I guess a complimentary event could be done that way as well. So are lots of different ways that you could do that question. The other thing I was thinking for that second question, I have been asked, can you do, do it without having to write out the combinations? And certainly you can. A little bit more challenging. Um, the good thing is we know what the bottom part of the fraction is going to be because we did it in the first part. If I did the place value, if I wanted to have um, the second card being a J, that would mean that I have got, well, if I've got three cards, I've got two possibilities here because I don't want to have a J there. I've only got one possibility there because I only want to have a J in the middle. And I've got two possibilities um, at the, actually, no, sorry, I've only got one possibility at the end, don't I? Because I've already used a card to start off with. Therefore, that would give me two by one is two, two by one is two. That gives me the two options. And that's where that two on the top part comes from. I can put it as two over six. Uh, likewise, I could do the same thing for the last one. Um, I could say if I want it to, um, probably the last card in arrangement is not a C. Um, well, I guess what I would do in this case, I'd probably do that one, find the probability that it is a C. Therefore, there's only one option there. There's two options there. There's one option there. That gives me two options that is a C. Therefore, two and six, it will be a C. One take away two six will give me that four and six. So again, without draw, oops, without uh, drawing them out, you can see it's a little bit more challenging. You can do it, but as you can see there, that's probably a little bit complicated for you. So certainly writing them out if there are only six options can be really useful. Okay, last question, I promise. Dave's school has a computer security codes made up of four digits. Um, Ioannita's, sorry if I um, if your name is Ioannita and I pronounce that incorrectly, um, she has security codes made up of five digits. How many more codes are available at Ioannita's school than at Dave's school? Well, for Dave, okay, Dave has four digits. Now, how many digits are there for that first position? Well, you got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which means you have 10 digits. And because the numbers can be repeated, that means we end up having 10,000 possible combinations. At Juanita's, maybe that's a better pronunciation of it, she has five digits. Again, you can have 10 in all of those, which will give you 100,000 options. So if it says how many more codes are available, well, I'm going to subtract 10,000 from 100,000, and that leaves me with 90,000 combinations, which in this case would be C. Okay, guys, look, I hope that made a little bit of sense to you. Um, some of the questions can get a little bit tricky, but using the place value system can be really nice. If you've got uh, combinations that are probably less than around about 12, then it can be a good idea to write them out, particularly with digits, uh, can be quite useful. Um, but certainly, yeah, have a crack at those questions and just see how you go. Have an awesome day, folks.